Okay. Sun is the first time for everything. There you go. Well, we recorded it once before. We never did anything with the recording. This time we're going. So, um, all right. I'm. My name's George. My card is in your folders. Okay. The uh, direct line there is this phone. Okay. So if you have any questions, call me. Okay. I'm not going to answer any phone calls while we're in class today. I don't know why I'm calls. <laughs> and uh, uh, but uh, if I'm not doing anything, I will answer. If not, I will get back to you. So just leave a message. Call and leave a message. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's do this. What kind of car do you guys have? We have a uh, Ford Fusion uh, hybrid. You have a Fusion hybrid. hybrid. We have two hybrids. You have yes. a hybrid too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, do you have the My Ford Touch? Yes. And do you have navigation? Yes. Do you have My Ford Touch? The touch screen? Yes. And do you have navigation? Yes. Okay. Ma'am? Uh, sports uh, Explore. Okay. 14? Yes. And do you have the My Ford Touch? Yes. And do you have navigation? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thirteen? Yeah. You have the My Ford. Okay? So you guys have the My Ford, you guys have the My Ford Touch with navigation. It just allows me to differentiate. When we're talking about different things, there's different things that your system will do, there's one, and vice versa. Okay? So we'll kind of get into the, we'll get into the differences. Okay. When everyone was here, and you bought your car, went real quick, right? Like an hour? Bought that yeah. car, you're in, out, no problem, right? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> after you were here for a long, long time, and we finally got everything done, um, we uh, went out to the car, right? And I'm sure the salesman said, hey, let me see your phone. And you said, here. And they went, beep, 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 here you go, you're synced. Right? Okay, so here's what we did. We made the car look for the phone, and then we made your phone for the car, okay? The car puts a, a six-digit number, okay? We put that six-digit number into the phone or the car puts it into the phone for us, okay? What the car remembers is the name of my phone, George's iPhone, in that six-digit code. What the phone remembers is sync and that six-digit code, okay? So when I get in the car in the morning and I turn the car on, the sync system says, Where's George's iPhone? And my iPhone goes from right here. The car says, what's the code? The phone says, here's the code. The car says, that's right. Let me have the phone book. And the car reaches into your phone and pulls the phone book out and puts it in the car every time you get in the car. So when you turn the car off and you walk away, about three minutes after you walk away, the phone book is forgotten. The only thing the car remembers is the name of your phone and that six-digit code. So no one can get anything off of your phone from the car without you being in the car and your phone being synced to the car. Okay? Nobody's getting anything off your phone without those things happening. For security reasons, that's important. But also it becomes important when we talk about the phone book here in just a minute. Okay? Sorry, I got a little geeky to start with. But I want to make sure I made that differentiation. I'll bring that back in a few minutes and show you why that's important. Okay? So now, when you were here, we synced up your phones, right? Everybody get their phone synced up? Has everybody answered a phone call? Okay. So on your on your steering wheel, you have a phone button. Okay? In the Fusions, you have the answer button, right? And a hang-up button, right? You know what I'm talking about? In your car, you have the one button. I have the phone button. Yeah. Right. You have the phone button. Okay. And you guys have the phone button on your steering wheel. You know what I'm talking about? Just yeah. the headphone? The, uh -huh. the, the phone? Okay. So when the call comes in, if you're in the car and the phone rings, you press the phone button one time. You count to two, and you say hello. Okay? Hit the button. One, two, hello! Okay. If you hit the button and you go, hello! And nobody's there, hit that button again, you go, hello! And nobody's there, hit that button again, you go, hello! You just hung up one. I can accept mine on my screen. Yes, you can. Yes, you can either hit the button on the on the steering wheel, 
where you can do it on the screen. And you can also accept it with the uh, top toggle switch, the one that says OK up at the top. Right. So you have three different ways to answer your phone. Okay. You're special that way. I have the limited. <laughs> yeah, it's more limited. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, and you guys, you also have the screen. You can touch the screen also. If you reject the phone call, it'll just send it to voicemail. Okay? If you want to reject a phone call and it's ringing in, all you have to do is hang up on it on your steering wheel or hit the red button on the, on the screen. Okay? So you guys just hold the button down, one, two, three, to hang up. Okay? Hold, hold the phone button down, one, two, three, to hang up. I had a question. Directional wise, if I want to. I hung up on somebody accidentally yesterday. I don't okay. know which, where, which direction I'd be to the left. On your, on your steering wheel. You have a pop tab your steering wheel right here. Oh, okay. okay. So that, you, I pushed it that way. Right, that's yeah. what you do. No, you hit it once, say hello. If you hit it again, you're going to hang up on it. Okay, I got you. Okay, and you but hold it down. Hold it down. So hold it down, one, two, three. It'll, no, you don't hold it down to answer. Just hit it once, let go, count to two, and say hello. Okay, I got you. Okay, if you hold it down for three, you'll hang up on it. Okay, that's also how you reject a call. Hold it down, one, two, three. Okay, does that make sense? And you guys have the hang up button on your steering wheels. Okay, so you just hit that once, and it should hang up. Okay, wait for the radio to come back on before you get snarky. Okay. Once the radio comes back on, you know you've been disconnected. If the radio doesn't come back on, you may think you've hung up and haven't. Wait for the radio to come back on before you say anything, okay? Good advice. <laughs> Just a word of advice. <laughs> All right? Okay. Um, so now, that's how you hang up. If you, uh, if you want to make a call out, you press the voice button. And the voice button is Sophie. Everybody met Sophie? Bling! Sink, say a command. Bing. That's Sophie. That's your voice button right there. Do you know where your voice button is? No, sir. I... Okay. It's right above your phone button. On your screen, no, right over here. Oh, the, the, the voice. It's media on that side and voice on this side. Okay. And, your, and yours is, you know what yours is. Okay. So if you call someone, I press to the left right. direction. Do I hold it down two seconds? No, nope. just hit it once and let go. And then it's going to no. ask me what I want to do. She, no, she goes, bling, sink, say command, bing. And that's Sophie, okay? Sink, say command, bing. And Sophie has four primary rules, okay? And they are written on this piece of paper. This is your little cheat sheet here in your folders, okay? Since Sophie's primary rules are one, if Sophie is talking, she's not listening to you, okay? If she's talking, She's not listening. Wait for the bink to start talking. Okay? Number two, she has a real short attention span. So if you don't start talking, she's going to start talking. Okay? She's trying to help you, trying to give you suggestions on what to say. Okay? Number three, Sophie's kind of temperamental. Okay? But when Sophie's temperamental, pay attention. She's trying to tell you what she expects to hear. Okay? And rule number four is, if Sophie asks you a question, she will not go anywhere or do anything else until you answer the question she asked. So, hit the voice button and I say, call Mary Anderson. And she says, at home, we're on cell. And you say, think to yourself, I only have one number for Mary Anderson. You hit the voice button you say, call Mary Anderson. And she says, at home, or on sub. And you say, call Mary Anderson. And she says, at home, or on sub. You hit it again, you go, cancel. And she says, at home, or on sub. Answer the question she asked. Now, pay attention when she's asking a question, though, because sometimes she'll say, at home, on cell, at work. Sometimes she'll say, say one for home, say two for cell. And you're like, you know, listen to the way she asked the question, because sometimes she'll look for a one, two, three answer. Sometimes she'll look for a name. Sometimes she'll look for a line number. If you have the same, then she'll say, say a line number. And you say, Mary Anderson. Say a line number, Mary Anderson. No, say the line number. Listen to what she's saying. Okay, she's trying to help you. Now, 
Rule number five is no hitting so. Okay? That's the unwritten rule. <laughs> okay? Now, <clears throat> sometimes when you're frustrated, and you will be frustrated with Sophie, sometimes it's easier to just hang up on her. Hold the button down, one, two, three. Okay? Hit the hang up button. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Sip your coke. <sighs> Try again. Okay? Now, what I tell everyone when they buy a car is, for the next two weeks, every time you get in the car, make a phone call. Now, once a day. Every time you get in your car, for the next two weeks, make a phone call. Okay? I don't care if you call each other. I don't care if you call home. I don't care if you call your voicemail. Every time you get in the car, make a phone call. Because you can get in their truck and change the volume on that radio with one quick glance. Right? Never been in their truck. Get in the car, you go, oh, there it is. Turn it. Same with you in their car. One quick glance. You'll figure it out. Okay? Why is that? Never been in their car. Have it. You've learned how it operates in different vehicles. Okay? All this is is a new habit. When we had uh, DVD players in cars for the first time, we used to bring up the families on Saturdays, and my wife would bring up our expedition. And she'd drop off my two boys in the expedition. She'd take my car and my daughter and go to Starbucks. Okay? And I'd have the families here, and I'd tell them to bring their kids. And I'd take the kids when my boys come in, and take them out to our car. And they'd run out to the expedition. And I'd take the other parents over to another car and say, this is how you mute it. Okay? This is how you pause the, this, the movie so that they'll listen to you. And this is how you make the volume go over the headphones instead of the speakers. You go, well, I need to learn the DVD, how to work it. It's why the kids know how to work it. They say, well, I have to learn how to work it. You're never going to ride in the back of your own car. You're going to be in the front. You need to learn how to pause it, <laughs> how to stop it. And they said, the kids are going to ask questions. I said, the kids have been out in that car for three minutes. They're done. They know how it works. <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah, those kids are so smart. Those kids aren't that smart. I haven't seen one of them fix it. <laughs> and they went, it's broke. They come inside and they go, Dad, fix it. It's broken. Okay? They're not that smart. They don't care. They push the buttons. They push the buttons until they get the desired effect. It's like Pavlov. Click. Oh, there it goes. That's how you pause it. Oh, that's how you make it go. That's how you make it stop. They just push the buttons because they don't care. Okay? That's what you have to do with the system. You have to get out of yourself and just start pushing buttons. You gotta push buttons. That's what the next two weeks are for. Just push buttons. Okay? Learn it. If you lock it up and you break it, as long as you didn't hit Sophie, bring it on back in. You pull right on the drive, get out of the car and say, George, that broke it. And we'll reset it to the day you bought it. Turn the car around and you'll be out of here in less than five minutes. Okay? You're not going to break it. You just got to play with it. Okay? You might call somebody you didn't want to call. Oh. Hang up. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So just remember how to hang up and disconnect. Don't get flustered. But you're going to talk to somebody on your phone list that you didn't know was still there and you're like, why am I talking to my high school sweetheart? Okay? Mm -hmm. right. Just get ready for it. But the big trick is this. Biggest trick, and this is the phone book. You have to learn your phone book, right? Because if I have, Sophie will look through your phone book first by the number of words, then by the number of syllables, and then by phonetics. So if I have Mary Anderson in my phone book as Mary, and I say call Mary Anderson, I have eliminated Mary as a possibility. Because one, Mary is one word, two syllables. Mary Anderson is two words, four syllables. So unless you have a real small phone book, she's not going to find it. Okay? So you have to learn your phone book, how you have names in your phone book. The way you do that is you start calling people. And here's the truth. There's only 10 to 20 people in your phone book you're going to call from your car. You'll take a call from anybody. Right? But I, I get 700 phone numbers in this phone book. Okay? When I'm in my car, and I call out, I call my wife, I call my kids, I call my brothers, I call my sister, I call work. I don't call my doctor. <laughs> you know, I got his phone number in there because I need it, but I don't do it while I'm driving down the road. Okay? I do it when I'm at home. I'm like, oh yeah, I have to make that. Okay? So there's only 10 to 20 names in your phone that you're going to call all the time. 
learn how to call those names from your system, okay? And so, a couple months ago, we had a lady in here. She said, she said I'm having trouble with my phone. Every time I try and call my husband, it calls my neighbor. Well, that's probably not good. What's your neighbor's name? Eric. What's your husband's name? Rick. So she said, call Rick, and it was calling the first name that matched it phonetically. Well, she had her husband in there as Rick P or Rick whatever, okay? So Eric was the closest match, and that was her name, okay? She said, how do I fix this? Add Eric's last name. Add Eric's last name. Take the vowel out of Rick's name. And now you've eliminated Eric as a possibility. When you say call Rick, it's no longer going to call Eric. It's going to look, keep looking through the phone book and find the next name, which is Rick. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay? So you're going to have to play with it. And that's what the next two weeks are for. You're going to call each other, you're going to learn how the system works, but you're also going to call those 10 to 20 people. Because you'll get tired of calling them. You'll get tired of leaving a voicemail. You go, oh, I haven't talked to my sister in forever. Hit the thing and call them. My sister, when she got her uh, skate, she would hit the button and say, call Bill O'Sullivan. And for whatever reason, it called our cousin, Brian. She said, what do I do? I said, well, you change Brian's name. You ask for Bill, the way you always ask for Bill, the most natural way. So if something's interfering with that, take the name that's interfering with it and change the name that's interfering with it. Add a last name, shorten the last name. In this case, you change Brian's first name to Bo's, and I don't know why it called Brian instead of Bill. I still haven't figured that one out, but it did. But she just changed his first name from Brian to Bo's, that's his nickname, and it worked. Okay, so you just change it. How do you redial? Uh it happened to me one coach, my salesman here, uh -huh. when I come up, I come up the next day, next Monday after about it, and we hadn't done any of this yet. Okay. Closing time. Anyway, he called the last number. He redialed somehow or another. Guess who he called? Metro Ford. Oh. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here in my new truck uh -huh. explaining to them. I got a new truck. <laughs> but how do you do how do you okay. read that? So you're, you're getting ahead of me, but that's good. Oh, okay? okay? No, that's good. <laughs> Alright, so if you hit the phone button on your steering wheel, the first thing that pops up on the radio screen is it says phone readout. And like in the my four touch it says there's a green to say yes, a red to say no. Okay? If you hit the okay or the or the call, it'll call that last number. In your truck it'll be right on the radio display. Okay? You hit the phone button on your steering wheel without hitting, hit, hitting the voice prompt. It just pops up on the radio screen. It says phone menu, and then it says phone readout. question mark. Correct. Well, actually, no, it just says readout. If you hit the OK, it pops up the question mark, and then you hit it again, and it'll dial. Okay. Okay? So I do that all the time on the way home. Yeah, I was curious Okay. About that. Then I hit the phone, OK, OK. Because every night I do this. And the reason for it is, the most popular phone number people call from their car is the last number they call. You can't do it every night. Get in the car, call my wife, and say I'm on my way home. She says, great. While you're on the way home, <laughs> can you stop at the grocery store and get tied and toilet paper? And I go, okay. And I get to the grocery store and I go, I can't remember anything. Mm -hmm. And I hit the phone button, okay, okay. Or in the, my car now, I just hit the phone button once and then it pops up on the screen and I hit it again and it dials home. I said, what was I getting again? I said, I told you. I had toilet paper and toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you go inside. Okay, but that's the reason for it and it's because it's the most popular phone number you can call. The last number you can call. Okay, All right, but that's how it happens. You, you hit the phone button. Now, in your car, the phone button on the radio is the same as the steering wheel. The okay on your radio is the same one as on your steering wheel. And on your steering wheel, it's not showing the OK, but on the phone, where the phone button is, mm -hmm. on the other side of that toggle switch, it says OK. Mm -hmm. All right? It doesn't show in that picture, but it is. Yeah, I, OK. All right. I look at it every day. And your OK is day. right above. OK? All right. So now we're going to call a name. OK? Say, call Mary Anderson. And Sophie says, at home, we're on cell. And we say, on cell. And Sophie says, Calling Mary Anderson on cell. What Sophie just told us is what she expects to hear. Call Mary Anderson on cell. So the next time I hit that voice button, 
if I just say, call Mary Anderson on cell, she will call Mary Anderson on cell. So say, call Mary Anderson on cell, and you'll dial out. Okay? If in your phone book you have John home, John cell, Mary home, Mary cell, you're having multiple people with the same last name. Okay? She'll think if you have their last name listed as cell, she thinks they all match. And that's that their real last name. So you'll have to say, call John Cell. And she'll say, calling John Cell on Cell. And you're like, what? Okay. But that's because she thinks his last name is Cell. Okay? For the same reason, if you say, call Mary Anderson Cell, she thinks Mary Anderson's last name is Cell. You have to say, call Mary Anderson on Cell. She likes the preposition. Okay? On or at. You can say at Cell. It doesn't sound natural, but you can. You'll get the same effect. Okay? Because as soon as she hears the preposition, she knows to stop listening and listen to what kind of phone. Okay? So even if you have it listed in your phone contacts as Jeff Cell, for example, mm -hmm. it's better to say call Jeff on Cell. No, you can say call Jeff Cell. Jeff Cell. On Cell. On Cell. Okay? But you don't have to do that if you just have Jeff Cell and one number. If you call Jeff Cell, she'll find that name, and she'll say calling Jeff Cell on Cell. You don't have to ask for it because you don't have multiple numbers. Okay? But what happens is, what happens with a lot of people now, so they call Jeff Cell and she'll say at home or, at home or on Cell. You know, because like they have a few buttons. Actually, it just says at work or on Cell. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, all right. Um, all right, so now, Dialing the number. If I hit the voice button and I say dial, she says number please. And I say 816-505-1818. What I don't say is 505-1818. What I don't say is 505-1000. Say each of the digits individually, 816-505-1818. Okay? And then she says, say dial to me. We're clear. You say dial. So dial number dial. Okay? Now, if you say dial, she says number please. And you say 816. Short attention span. She goes bling! 816. You say 505-1818. Just say the rest of the number. And then she'll read it back to you. Those new numbers that you said. Okay? She'll show it on the screen. Okay. In the My4 Touch, if you touch the top left screen, okay, if you touch up here, you can dial a phone number right from your pad. Okay. In the truck, if you hit the phone button once, it pops up, it says phone menu, and then it says phone redial. You can use the keypad on the radio, the 1 to 10, and dial a number. And then you just hit OK. Okay. For you guys, you dial the number, and then you hit dial. Okay? And do that right from, right from the screen. And so the passenger can dial a phone number. Okay? And then it goes over the speakers. Personally, I've just been using my phone. It's just that, you know, I pull up my contacts. You're cheating. <laughs> the well, and then I'm going to ask you to try not to do that for the next two weeks because yeah, gonna, because I'm, this reason and this reason only. This system is designed to assist you and make your life easier, so that your eyes are on the road and that you're driving the car. Okay. In most states, in Kansas, there's already a bill in front of a in front of Congress yeah. to make talking on yourself or picking up your cell phone while you're driving illegal, and, it, and they're talking about it in Missouri too. There's already like 10 or 12 states, and there's like 20 states that have that legislature that's pushing through. It's gonna be the law. I'm a truck driver. I mean, it's free. And, and oh, so you know? I mean, I got my Bluetooth yeah. that I <clears throat> operate on, and it's basically the same. I press the button on my headset. It asks me who I want to call, and I so right. So, but did, until today, I knew didn't know how to I get didn't to know how to get with. So my, this you'll so pick this up in no time. Because this is the same thing. It's just yeah, yeah. going to be a couple different phrases, and that's all. I know all about the don't understand. But yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> all right. Um, privacy. Okay. You guys are in. Um, you and I, we're going to the store. 
and your wife calls. You don't want me to listen to your phone. Right? So you answer the phone. Okay? You answer the phone, say, hold on, and you go to your your phone screen and you hit privacy. And then it takes the call and puts it on your on your phone. Okay? Or you answer the phone, you say, hold on just a second. Hit the hit the voice button. It's just bing sync, say a command, bing, and you say go to privacy. Okay? And she says go into privacy, and she takes the phone call off the speakers and sends it to your phone. So you can pick up your phone and talk. Okay? When you hang up, the next phone call will come through the speaker system. Okay? On the My Ford Touch, you also have that Do Not Disturb button. If you push that button, all phone calls will go to voicemail. Okay? So it just takes all the calls and sends them straight to voicemail. Sorry, I'm going to make myself a note. Okay. Um, Okay. Now, have you guys had any specific problems with your phone books? Okay. Anybody have trouble calling anybody? Okay. I have one real quick question. I'm tired of her telling me 911 is set to off. Okay, why do you have it set to off? I don't. Somebody did. I haven't, okay. I haven't done anything. Well, we can fix that, and you want to set it to on, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Uh, but Yeah, I, but I want it on. If it's but off. I don't know how to turn it on. If it's off, it tells you it's off every time unless you turn the prompt. You can turn the prompt off so she doesn't tell you, but you definitely want it on. And all you have to do is if you hit the phone phone button, use the two button, you can go to 911 assist, hit OK, okay. And, it'll, and then you can flip through the off on and just yeah, turn I'd it like back on. Have it in, you, in it, in it says where you are, I'm in a crash, I'd like that to yeah, definitely. go off. You know? Yeah, definitely. All right, now remember what we were talking about the phone book earlier? So if I'm having trouble and I'm calling Eric, and I want to be calling Rick, okay? You change Eric's last name, add his last name. The next morning I get in the phone call, I get in the car, and the phone book is automatically updated. As soon as I change it in my phone, the next time I get in the car, if I'm in the car and I change something in the car, it's not changed until I walk away from the car and come back the next time, okay? If I just turn the car off, and restart the car. Remember, she needs about three to five minutes. She still has a phone book in there. She doesn't have to re-download it. Okay? It takes about three minutes for it to go away. Okay? So you worry about that. But, but you can play with these names over the next two weeks when you're making that phone call every morning. Play with the names in your phone book. And see what you can find out. Okay? Let me see if I get this thing. Okay, um, so let's talk about vehicle health reports, okay? When you were here, we created a Sync My Ride account, hopefully, for everybody. Did everybody get their Sync My Ride account created? Okay. So, at your Sync My Ride account, you have the opportunity to look at vehicle health reports. You have to ask for them when you're in the car. So when you're in the car, you hit the voice button and you say vehicle health report, and she runs a vehicle health report and sends it to your Sync My Ride account. That's, that's supposed to be over. <laughs> she sends it to your Sync My Ride account. Okay? Then you log in your Sync My Ride account, okay? And you can look at your vehicle health report. Now, why is this important? Right now, it's not real important. But those vehicle health reports in some cars will measure brake pad depth. Okay? It'll tell you your, your brakes are halfway gone. Your brakes need to be visually checked. Okay? If you have a check engine light on, it'll send you the information to your Sync My Ride account about what the check engine light is for. Okay? Now it's not going to tell you what's wrong with the car. Okay? It's going to tell you where to look. Okay? Air intake, for example. Okay? That guy got a, a big old butterfly sucked into his air intake. Okay? Check engine light was on. Okay? It doesn't tell you what's wrong, it just tells you where to look. Air intake. Open up the air intake. There it is. Okay. He's stopping at the auto parts store to have him print out a code for it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you just send it right here. It doesn't give you the code number, because it, I guess they figure that's too technical. What it does is it gives you where to look. Okay? That's the same code that we pull up. 
What's important about those codes, just while we're on this subject, if a check engine light comes on in your car, and your car is running fine, most people get a little nervous, but they don't get scared. Okay? If the check engine light will go off, if you start your car and something happens, the car misfires, check engine light comes on. Okay? You start the car again, it's fine. Start it again, it's fine. Okay? When you get to the fifth start, the check engine light goes off. Now we don't know what happened. The check engine light will stay on for the next five to seven starts, depending on what car it is. It's important to have somebody pull that code or run a vehicle health report while that light's still on. Okay? So that, that way we know where to look. So do you do that by just uh, just calling hit, Sophie and ask the vehicle health report? Correct. Just hit the voice button and say vehicle health report. You can also, if you want, if you push around in the buttons, you can get to it on the screen and hit it, and it'll run it for you automatically. Okay? <clears throat> in order for that to work, the phone that is the primary at your Sync My Ride account has to be synced up to the car to run the report. Okay? Not the primary in the car. Okay? The one that's the primary at your Sync My Ride account. Okay? So now, let's talk about primary. You can sync up up to 12 phones to your car or 12 Bluetooth devices, including like iPads and Kindles and that sort of stuff, okay? She's only connected to one at any given time, okay? So now, if you get in your car, she looks for the primary. If she doesn't find the primary, next phone to answer wins, okay? Now, here's how you can play tricks with it. In my car, my wife is the primary. Okay? My wife never doesn't ride in my car. Hardly ever. But when we're in the car together, when we're out together, nope, my kids don't call me. They call her. Because she says yes and I say no. They say, no, never call me. They call her. Okay? So when we get in the car together, that's who's really going to call us probably. It's one of our kids. I, sync her, I want her phone to be synced up so I have the opportunity to say no. Okay? But in my car, I get in the car every morning. I start the car and it looks for it. My wife's phone doesn't find it. Next phone to answer one wins. It looks up to my galaxy. All right? So you can play with it. But if I sync my right account, I'm the primary. Okay? So that I can use the services because I'm the one in the car most of the time. Okay? So you can play a little bit some little tricks with it. There's different things you can do to make it work. Now, if I have, and you should, everybody who drives the car should have their phone synced up to the car. So that when you're driving, it's synced up to the car for safety reasons and for 911 assist, which we're going to get to in just a second. Okay? <clears throat> but if you guys start the car and you charge your phone, cell phones, right inside on the kitchen cabinet, on the kitchen counter, right inside the garage, okay? Whose car is it? Okay. Like you said, it's so, okay. So if you if her phone's a primary in your car and you get in the car and start the car, her phone's on the counter in the kitchen charging. Let's go find her phone. And then you pull up and you pull out of the driveway and it says phone disconnected. You know, I'm sitting right here. My phone is right here. It's disconnecting from her phone. Okay. So now if you hit the phone button, it says no phone connected. But then what the next thing she says is I'll try to connect. And then she'll connect to your phone. Okay? But that's only if mine is charging? No, no, no. Just if yours is within 30 feet of the car. 30 or 40 feet of the car. Oh, now, and I don't know what the exact range is, but it is about 30 feet. Because right, right when the sync system came out, this was so much fun. Okay, so I'm showing this, you know, it's new to all of us, right? So we had this OE Fusion out here, and I'm, I'm showing these people about this car. And I'm, there's husband and wife and two kids. And I'm between the two kids in the back seat. Okay. I seek up the husband's phone. We're going through some stuff about it. The car was going to be for him. And his phone rings. And he looks down at the phone and he goes, I have to get this. And he jumps out of the car and shuts the door. Okay. He answers the phone. It's another car dealership. Okay, So we're in the car, the wife and kids, 
We're listening to the conversation. Okay? And he's wandering around and walking around, and he's, you know, 30, 40 feet away from the car, and I'm like, gee, I wonder how far this thing works, you know? <laughs> but he, this other car dealership is like, hey, I'm sorry we didn't get you in business. Come on back. We'll do this, and we'll do that, and we'll do this, and we'll do that. And he's like, no, no, I found the car I want. And they said, they said well, we'll make you a better deal. And he goes, no. You know, this guy's showing me some stuff on the car that you didn't even tell me was on the car. This is the right color. This is the car. And this is what I want to do. He goes, well, I tell you what, we'll make you a heck of a deal. Just come on back. He goes, no, this is the car I'm going to buy. And I'm going to buy it right now. Thank you very much. But please don't call again. This is the car I'm going to buy. And he hangs up the phone. And he's 30, 40 feet away. And the wife turns around to me in the car and says, I guess we're done negotiating, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it does have a pretty good range. I'm, it's about 30 I've got two, two devices on, on my phone, my headset at work, and I can walk a good distance from my vehicle. And so if yeah. I've had a phone call, walking away from it, take it out of my case and try to answer it, yeah, well, I'd answer it in the car. Right, right. In the truck, rather. Right. Now, on most smartphones now, and you were saying this earlier, if the phone rings, you have the opportunity, I know I told you how to go to privacy, but like if the iPhone rings, it rings and it gives you the options on your phone to answer the phone call. So you can hit sync if you answer it on your phone call. If you know it's something you don't want to go over the speakers, you can go straight to your phone and hit um, on the phone. Usually on most phones, most smartphones, iPhones and most, most uh, Androids, you can go ahead and answer it and keep it off the speaker. Again, I wouldn't suggest that, because we're promoting hands-free. Now, here's the other thing I want to say about these systems. When you're in the car, your phone is synced up to the car, okay? The car is here, and your phone is here. It's three feet, okay? If it's all scratchy, the phone call's all scratchy, and it's, and it's a bad connection, the cell tower, it's two miles away. Okay? It's probably the connection between the phone and the cell tower, not the phone and the three feet distance. Okay? But what does happen, because this is a speakerphone, and the radio system in the car is much better than the radio system on the phone, is sometimes it'll amplify some of the high ends and the low ends, so if you get a real crackly phone call, it will sometimes make it more difficult to hear. Is that, am I making sense? Okay, so sometimes you have to take it off the, off the speaker system to hear if you have a really, really bad connection. Sometimes it makes it better because you don't get the high end and the low ends on your phone, you just get the middle part, which is where voice tones are. Okay, the car tries to compensate for that, uh, but it is a much better audio system, so sometimes that stuff is a little amplified. Okay, All right, so just be aware of that. Um, also, I'm gonna guarantee it to you that at some point in the future, you're going to go home, and make a phone call on the way home, get home, go inside, go to bed, get up in the morning, go out and get in your car, and the sink is not gonna work. It's broken. It doesn't work. We're fine last night, now it's broken. It's not broken. Okay? Turn the car off. Turn your phone off. All the way off. Reboot your phone. If you can, pull the battery out. Turn the car off. Turn the car back on. It'll fix the problem 90% of the time. Okay? Restart your phone, restart the car. Okay? Because that's the magic fix for 90% of the problems that you're going to have. Every time you hit a cell tower, your phone records each cell tower. Okay? So after a few days, if you haven't shut your phone off and rebooted your phone, memory starts getting a little full, okay? You reboot it, it throws all that out. It doesn't forget it, it just puts it in a log, okay? Sometimes your phone, sometimes the car, you need to reboot. You know, when you update a, update a phone, I mean update your computer, it says must reboot, reboot, phones are the same way. And especially these smartphones are updating almost every single day, they're updating something, an app or something. Sometimes they just need to reboot. Okay, so reboot. Okay. Um, now let's talk about 911 assist. Okay. Like you were talking about. Okay. If 
you get in a car accident and your airbags are deployed or your fuel shutoff switch is fired, okay? Fuel shutoff switch stops the flow of gas from the tank to the engine, okay? In the uh, Fusions and the Explorer, there it's an electronic switch. So it'll turn it off and then the next time you start the car, if there's no problems, it'll allow the gas to flow. The F-150s, it's, it's mechanical. The passenger side, the right kick plate, if you take your foot, the right foot and kick the wall, behind that wall, there's a switch. You just have to push it down and reset it, okay? If you have to reset your fuel shutoff switch, you probably have much bigger problems, okay? But my brother set his off um, when he, his tire went flat and the, the tread came around and whipped into the bumper. Fuel shutoff switch is fired at the front or rear end collision in excess of 10 miles an hour. Okay, so the reason they have the mechanical one on the pickup trucks is if you haven't noticed, not truck drivers, some pickup drivers don't know how to drive their trucks and they bang into things on <laughs> So they leave that mechanical so they can reset it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I first learned about fuel shutoff switch. I pulled up a Ranger for a customer one of my first weeks here. Drove out, came inside, got the customers, went out to the car, the car wouldn't start. I sat there for 20 minutes, like, did I put it in the park? Did I, what am I, I'm missing something, you know? No, couldn't be. Finally, it struck me that I checked this fuel shutoff switch that I've been hearing about. And I reset it, and it started right up. And they left me, I'm like, why in the world? You know, what happened? Well, we went to the video cameras. And when I had come inside, somebody had turned the corner and popped right into the back of the pickup, brand new pickup truck. And it backed up and drove right out. <laughs> <laughs> but they had hit it hard enough to jolt it. Now, it actually didn't do any damage to the truck at all, but it just hit it hard enough to fire the fuel shutoff switch. Okay? So, anyways, so that was a sidebar. So, the fuel shutoff switch or your airbags are deployed. Sophie comes over the speakers. Okay? And she says, I've detected airbag deployment. I'm going to call 911 unless you press and hold the phone button for three seconds. So in other words, unless you hang up on me, I'm calling 911, okay? When you don't hang up, she dials 911. 911 answers, and Sophie says to the 911 operator, I have a 2014 Ford Fusion with airbag deployment. Press one for its location, press zero to talk to the customer. So they hit one. Sophie gives them the longitude and the latitude of the vehicle. So it's in about 10 feet of where you're at. Okay? And then they hit zero and they're talking to you. So by the time they're talking to you, they know what kind of car you have, that you've been in a serious wreck, and exactly where you're located. Okay? Now, unfortunately, we know it works. Okay? Last year in November, we had a customer who got in a wreck right up here on I-29, coming back from the airport. In that first snowstorm last year, we, last November we had a snowstorm, we were supposed to get like four inches of snow, we got like a quarter of an inch. This was a year ago, kind of like the last one, two weeks ago. Anyway, <laughs> but anyways, she was coming back from the airport, and uh, the car came racing by because there was that much snow. It got squirrely, T-boned her, ran, and they ran into the guardrail, everybody was fine. But she came to a stop, and she jumped out and ran over to the other car. She came to a stop to make sure the other, the other person was okay. And the other lady was shaken up. And she was fine. She said, listen, I'm going to go call 911. And she said, I ran back across the street, or the highway, you know, and I opened the door. And she said, when I opened the door, I heard the sirens. Now, admittedly, the fire department's only a block away, okay? But she already heard the sirens. Well, she was out of the car. Okay? And the car had called 911. And she actually had her phone in her pocket. She said that too, and that goes back to my 30, 40 feet. She had the phone in her pocket, so she got out, ran over to the other car. She went back to her car to look for it, but she actually had it on her. But she was close enough, the car picked it up, the car called 911, using her phone in her pocket while she was helping this other lady. So it works. Okay? In order for it to work, your phone has to be in the car and the Bluetooth has to be on. Okay? But in the instance I was talking about earlier, when you back out of the driveway, it disconnects from her phone, and you don't reconnect the phone, your phone. If you get in a car rack and your phone's not connected, as long as it's been synced to the car, it's one of the phones listed, she's going to force that connection. 
you make that call. Now, what if the engine goes off? As long as the battery has power, it's good to it'll work. Now, statistics are a wonderful thing, aren't they? If the odds of your phone being more than 40 feet away from the car are about the same as the odds of your battery being disconnected from the car in the rack. Okay? Almost negligible. Like less than a, a percent. Okay? <clears throat> so, is there the chance that it doesn't make the call? Yeah, there is. There, there certainly is. Okay? But it's statistically, it's minor. Very minor. Okay? Less than a couple of percent. Okay? The system works. That's the fun part. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions about any of this stuff? Anything? What about uh, I, we were using our uh, Snake My Ride services mm -hmm. this morning? Just playing with it. Yeah. And uh, for example, I asked about traffic down Des Moines, Iowa. Traffic works. Uh, Are you going to Des Moines today? Okay. Thank God. <laughs> Yesterday was bad up there. <laughs> I'll bet. It was. But, uh, and I know you can put favorites in there, supposedly. Like if I want to put other favorites. Uh, right. You know, like we have a daughter in Des Moines, we have a son up in Madison, Wisconsin. If I wanted to just stick those in there somehow, how would I go about it? Okay. Yeah. Well, two things. Number one, you're right on my next subject. Are good. Uh, I'm two down the road. But you can do that. You can do that by voice if you put in an address. You can do it by voice while you're on line. Or you can go to your Sync My Ride account. See, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to your Sync My Ride account, and at the bottom it says, uh, it says Personalized Sync Services, and you can add saved points right there. So I can do that on my laptop. On your laptop at home. Just go to your Sync My Ride account. Okay. Now you can also obviously save them in the navigation system, but what I really like about your question is it's rather sophisticated what you're trying to do, and so you're actually trying to use the the, the uh, abilities of the of the system, which is really neat. <laughs> so in order to do what you want to do, you want to put them on sync services also. Okay. All right. So you can have them on, in both places. You can have it in the car, and you can put it in sync services. Now the other trick is. Add them on sync services. So we're gonna get to that in just a second, guys. <laughs> if you add them on sync services and you and you ask for direction, you go on, hit the voice button, say services, directions to what's your kids say? Uh, Nicole's. Nicole's house. Yeah, right. She'll download it right into the nav system in your car. And then you can just save it as a favorite in your car too. You don't have to do it in both places. You have to download it from sync services to the car. To put it from the services to the car. You cannot take it from the car and put it up in the cloud. So now, if I enter all this on my laptop at home, I'm saying my ride down it will automatically download. No, you have to get in the car, say services. Because when you load it, when you load in Nicole's house on Sync, Sync My Ride, yeah. you put in her address and you give it a name, Nicole's house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then you get in the car, you hit the voice button, you say services. The services. So you say directions, Nicole's house, and she'll say finding directions, and then she'll send you the, the address right to your navigation system and drop it into your navigation system. And then you hit uh, route or uh, set its destination, and then it's in your previous destinations. You, from there, you can edit the things. Or, or it won't go, it's not going to go away. Once it's, in your, once it's in your nav system, it's not going to go away unless you don't as long as you set it as a destination. If you just download it, if, if you do something else, it'll go away. So as soon as it downloads, you set it as a destination. Okay? That was a little sophisticated. Sorry, I didn't mean to get away there. All right? That was good. I like that. Okay, so let's let's talk about audio real quick. Okay? So with the uh, Sigma Ride, or the uh, My4 Touch systems, okay? You, forget. you can change radio system, radio station by voice. The voice button, say no. 101.1, 94.9, she'll change the station. Hit the voice button, say watercolors, she changes to watercolors. Does everybody know what watercolors is? 
serious, light jazz, beautiful. Really a nice station. Love it. Okay? So try it out. Okay. So <laughs> watercolors. Anyways, um, but you just give her the name. The name of any serious channel you want to listen to, or the number of any FM station or AM station that you want to listen to, and she'll change the radio station. You have to say FM or nope. serious or anything. Nope. Just say 94.9. You can, you can say 980 AM, okay? And she'll say, change the name, AM 980, whatever. Don't say, don't say AM or FM first, 94.9 FM, but you don't need to do that, just say 94.9. There are some instances where there's some numbers that'll phonetically be similar to a station. It's kind of funny, because the things you would never think about. Um, what was it the other day? I asked for a number and it kicked in a serious channel. I'm like, world did that happen but it's just a phonetic match and so sometimes you have to say 94 points I mean there's certain channels you'll do some, you know take you to the wrong station in order to get around that you just say 94.9 FM okay but usually you don't have to even do that okay you can ask for a serious channel by number but if you ask for a serious channel by number you have to say serious 115 okay it's easier to ask for them by name the serious channels it's easier to ask for by name okay if you have music on a USB device, an iPod, a flash drive, you can plug it into the USB port in the car. Hit the voice button, say USB. She says USB, say it ran. You say play artist U2. Play track E Sync Lewis to the loop. Play album, whatever. Anything that's in your phone. Anything that's on that no, anything that's on that USB device. Yeah. If, well, you, if you have an you have an Android or an iPhone, your phone. Android, I guess. Okay. So if with an Android, when you plug it into the car, you have an option to pick it to mount it for charging only, or as a USB drive. Also, I can send all my music Bluetooth. Right. Well. Well. Yes. Like Pandora. Right. You can do that, but you're getting ahead of me again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. But if you mount your, if you just select like on mine. I mount mine as a hard drive every time. It'll still charge, but I say mount it as a hard drive so that I can ask for my music by name. Okay? But as long as you, you may have to make that selection on an Android. On an iPhone, if you have your music on the device, it'll read it. If you have it in the iCloud, it won't because the music isn't really on your device. Even if it says it, it's not really all downloaded to your device. But, uh, charge with USB. This when I play it in the car, this is it's, it's not reading it because of the tape. So it won't charge it or it, it won't it says it's not reading it, it doesn't sync with the car. Okay. So have, have, do you, if you if you plug it in and the if cord, you go to, the cord the USB cord came with my phone. When I right. plug it in the car it says it's it's not synced with this with you know. Okay. If you if you if you go down and you Go down to your settings. They'll have a USB charger there. Just touch it and say mount as hard drive. If you want to play some music off of it. If you don't, hit it for charging only, and then you won't even get the error message. Well, see, everything, see, it was synced to my iPhone first. We had somebody got my phone. So everything that was on my iPhone, I was able to transfer from my computer right. on to this one. So everything is just still in there. It just had to find my phone, this phone, for a minute. It took a minute before I was able to get it to sync on the my touch. Okay. It took a minute. But right. But because now, everything that I had on the iPhone is still on this phone now, so it really kind of just picked it up really quick. Okay. Now, did you resync that phone to the my phone touch? I really didn't have to. It we kind of. Have you made any phone calls with it yet? Yes. Okay, all right, so, so yeah, there you go. I Good. guess because, all, you know, like I said, all the information that was on my iPhone, I was right. able to transfer to this phone, so everything just had to find this phone, and I was able to use it. Okay. So it's just that when I use the USB, it just wouldn't be detected, so I guess now I have If you just go to that notification thing and tell it how you want it to find it. If you want to play music off of there by voice, in other words, tell it what you want it to play, you have to mount it as a hard drive. If you want it to just charge, you can do it to charge because Bluetooth audio. You can also hit the voice button and say Bluetooth audio. 
whatever is on your phone, if you have just songs on your phone, it'll just start the music player on your phone automatically. If you want to listen to Pandora, if you all you have to do is start it on your device. Whatever's playing on your phone, you play over the speaker system. Whatever is playing. So if you're watching Monday Night Football on the Watch ESPN app, not that I would suggest that you do that while driving down the road, but if you're watching the Watch ESPN app, and you said you can listen to it over the speaker system. So you can watch it. Anyways, so, um, but whatever's playing on your device will play over the speakers. Okay? Now, oh, and the other thing that you guys can do in your car is change the temperature by voice. Yeah. Climate, set temp, 72. Not you guys. Not you guys. Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you say, hit the voice button say, climate, set temp, 72. All right? Climate, set temp, whatever. Increase fan, decrease fan. Okay. Well, one question if you have it on my temp, there's two settings my temp and do. Right. Okay. Sophie doesn't care about the passenger. <laughs> Passengers on their own. Okay? So if you turn dual if you turn dual off, if you turn dual off, then she'll use the same temp for both sides. If you have the temp for the passenger side set separately. They're on their own. They have their quote unquote free hands moving because they're not steering, so they can adjust their own. Where would be if you have it on dual? If you have it on dual. But if you turn dual off, then it's the temp for the whole car. Also, the rear will follow the driver, not the not the passenger. So if you have it set for 474 um, and you're sitting on the inside and you want it at 68, the back's going to be 74. And the front's 74. You're going to be 69. Does that make sense? Okay, if you set the dual temp, if the passenger sets their temp, that's for that seat in the car. The rest of the car is controlled by the driver's temp. Okay, that's a better way to say it. Okay. Um, okay, so now, now i got to talk to these guys for just a second. You guys have what's called mobile apps, sync app link, okay, in the truck. You can control, like Pandora, if you listen to Pandora, you can control Pandora by voice. Right. You can hit the because all you do is hit the voice button. You say mobile applications, mobile apps, and she'll search your phone and find all the apps that can be controlled by voice that are on your phone, including uh, iHeartRadio, Pandora, USA Today, Wall Street Journal. Uh, this isn't even all of them, but Sirius XM has an app. Okay, um, I tune in, tune in radio, Spotify. There's lots of things. And then like, so if you're listening to Pandora, you can hit the voice button and say, change channel. Pick a different channel. Yeah, I've got some nice music. I wouldn't need that, you know, it's right. really high tech, but it's nice to know that I can, I can do that if I like. Yeah. It's pretty cool, because like, if you want to get the news, you can get the news, okay? So that's something you guys have that these guys don't. That's coming to the I, to the My Ford Touch eventually, um, but it's all, it's available in the other parts right now. And there's also some, Navigation systems that will work through it, they're a little more difficult. Perhaps I'm getting ahead of you. Does my truck have GPS like like Okay, so you're actually right on right on the money. So let's okay. talk about that now. Okay. So sync services is what we're gonna talk about. Okay. Sync services, all right. You guys have given a three year complimentary subscription to sync services. You guys are not. Okay, it comes with the My Ford Touch, it doesn't. But it's only sixty dollars a year, so it's five dollars a month. Okay, um, and with that, you can get business search, addresses, uh, weather, news, traffic. Okay, so the way that it works is you hit the voice button, and you say services, and she dials out and log to to Detroit to an eight hundred number in Detroit, and she logs into your Sync My Ride account. Okay, and you say directions to Nicole's house, and she says. Finding, she says, directions to Nicole's house. And since you have navigation, she'll just download it to the car. Okay? She'll say download it. And she downloads it. Your car will find it. Okay? If you guys say directions to Nicole's house, the first thing she's going to do is say finding location. And she will send the location of the vehicle to Detroit. Okay? So it's a sending location. And then she figures out the route. And she downloads the route from where you're at to Nicole's house in Des Moines, right? Okay? To, to Nicole's house in Des Moines. 
to your car. When she's done downloading and she disconnects and the radio comes back on, on your radio screen, it'll show you directions. In your guys' case, since you all have navigation, she just drops it right into the navigation system. You just hit set as destination. Okay? Now, in, you, in your car, she's going to, if you get off route, so like you get off the highway to go get gas, she's going to say, leaving planned route. Do you want me to re, do you want me to uh, reroute? And you say no, because you're just getting off to get gas. When you get back on the highway, she says, returning to planned route. In your guys' case, she would just, it automatically does it on the car. Okay? So now, I want to talk about this for just a second again. I want to be a little geeky here again for just a moment. There are no tracking systems in Ford vehicles, except for the electric vehicles. Okay? There's no Ford, there's no GPS tracking system in your vehicle at all. Okay? If your car gets stolen, there is not a GPS tracking system. Throw your phone in the car as it's leaving, if your car is getting stolen. Okay? It's easier to find a phone than it is the phone. Okay? For privacy reasons, Ford has chosen not to do that. Okay? They don't. So, so there isn't a locator. Nobody can get on a computer anywhere and find out where your car is. Not even the NSA. Okay? Nobody can find out where your car is. Okay? Can't get on a computer. Your car has a GPS marker system, not a GPS tracking system. The, what that means is the car knows where it's at at all times, but nobody else does. Okay? So when you dial into sync services and you say directions to Cole's house, the first thing she says is, okay, where are you? By virtue of you asking for directions, she says, okay, and sends your location to Detroit. And then they download the directions. Now I've got, our truck doesn't have this navigation system. You don't have the navigation system, but you do have sync services. So you get directions and as you're going along, like in